This next story from Children's Hospital of Michigan involves a little boy from Traverse City with a mystifying eye condition that finally found an answer on the other side of the globe. People say hello to you at the curb <laughs> <laughs> with a smile on their face. Steve and Susan O'Valley have come down to Children's Hospital from their home in Traverse City with their daughter Rachel and their little boy Danny. It was a vastly different experience than oh. any of the hospitals we had been to. Right. Adopted as a healthy newborn, Danny is nearly three now and doing well. But not long ago, things were very different. A year ago, we were in crisis. We, it was devastating. Danny couldn't hold himself up. There would be hours every morning where I would just hold him in my arms and carry him around and support his body because he couldn't. The serious trouble started with small signs when Danny was a few months past his first birthday. When we started to see his eyes flutter and his head bob a little bit, and it was just two to three seconds a couple of times a day. Where are your eyes? The O'Valleys brought Danny to a major medical center downstate where he was diagnosed with childhood epilepsy. It was a type that most children outgrow, but he was soon having over 100 seizures a day. He was placed on one medication and then another, and then he developed a strange and puzzling eye condition. His eyes rolled up on the top of his head, and in order for him to see, he'd have to drop his chin to his chest so he could see around him. And he would uh, be like that in every day, this frozen up gaze condition would happen right for there. several hours at a time. A and yep. Danny's doctors at the medical center had never seen it before. Hi, the pediatric yeah. neurologist treating Danny uh, okay. Can you put thought that in? that was part of the seizure disorder. So she increased uh, his seizure medication. Danny's up gaze condition only worsened. We thought we were poisoning our child, we thought we were over medicating him, that we were killing him. Finally, the O'Valleys decided to call Danny's neurologist. She answered by asking me why I was calling her on her day off. And I mentioned to her my son's condition doesn't have a day off, and we followed her instruction to increase the medication, and he's getting worse. At which time she said, then you can administer the medication as you see fit. And at that point, we immediately knew we needed to start looking for a new doctor. How much can you talk? A therapist recommended Children's in Detroit, and within days, the O'Valleys had come down with Danny to meet with the hospital's chief of neurology, Dr. Harry Shigani. I usually want to establish a rapport with the child and, and uh, make it clear that the child is important to, uh, to the visit. And so I tried to do that. I went straight up to him, picked him up, and tried to establish eye contact and a rapport with him. We were just blown away. That had never happened. Nobody talked to Danny, uh, let alone really even considered him as part of the, the, the group of people, uh, even though he was the person with the condition. The second important thing the doctor did was listen carefully to the worried parents. If mom tells me the child got worse on the medication, I take that very seriously. As Danny was weaned off the medication and his upgaze improved, Susan was hunting on the internet for answers. And we found online an article, an abstract of a medical journal describing this chronic upgaze. It's called Paroxysmal Tonic Upgaze with Ataxia of Childhood. In my email to Dr. Shigani, uh, I attached the article and asked him if this could possibly be what we're seeing. I thought it was very interesting and I wanted to pursue that. Uh, fortunately, I actually knew the author uh, who described this condition. He's an Australian. Uh, and uh, I was going to see him the following week in a meeting in the Philippines. And so Dr. Shikani was uh, the difference from having a doctor saying to you, don't call me on my day off, to a doctor saying to me, I'm going to the Philippines, send me a videotape and I'll bring it with me, just speaks volumes. And I wanted them to send me the video so I could put it on my uh, laptop and show this to the, uh, uh, that uh, Australian doctor, which I did and he agreed very, very quickly. He was quite excited and, see and said, yes, that's exactly what I uh, described and that's a classical case of it. And I think that confirmed the diagnosis. 
The news from the Philippines was welcomed in Traverse City. Oh, we celebrated that <laughs> night, I think. We were very excited. Huge relief. Huge relief. Huge relief. It's, it's considered relatively benign that Danny will outgrow it, that there's virtually no treatment. Periodically, the Ovales continue to bring Danny down to Children's for testing, and the whole family is grateful that the Ronald McDonald House is there for them. Being so far away from home, Traverse City, down here, and not knowing the area very well, to have this right next to the hospital has been just invaluable. It's been a great, great help for us. With a good chance he'll outgrow both his epilepsy and the upward gaze problem, the future seems bright for Danny. I think he's doing well. We've taken him off the medication that made him worse. He still has occasional episodes, but not very bad, and seems to be developing rather nicely. The Ovalis remain deeply grateful to the whole staff at Children's. Gentle, kind, patient, acknowledging the children, all of the kids. We come here and we're comfortable. We feel accepted. We feel a part of this big family where people are important.